Uh, Frank said he got here about two minutes ago, so let's just go in. Okay, guys, come on. What are you doing here? I wanted to get a shot of you arriving at work. I thought this was going to be just an interview. Oh, it is, but I thought it would be nice to open with you starting your day. Would you mind taking another sip of coffee? Yes, I would. Perry, we finally got a response from those people at Harvard. What's going on? A very good question. I think we can cut here. You ready? Mr. Mason, is there any kind of client that you wouldn't handle? Yes. One who lied to me. Perry, I got that. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. Excuse me. Mr. Melansky and I need a moment alone. Of course. Well, I got Williamson's statement, but I don't think it's going to help our case much. Young lady, your interview, this interview, is over. I do not want you disrupting my office. I'm just trying to add a dimension of reality, sort of um, television verite, if you know what I mean. Look, Charlie, it is Charlie, isn't it? Yes, it is. Check with Miss Street. Make a date for me to come to your station. I'll do as long a law day interview as you wish. Okay. Can I still use the footage I took today? Damn it, girl. Mr. Mason, I, I realize that we're intruding, but I, I'm really trying to go for sort of a naturalistic thing, you know? And uh, I, I do keep my word. I won't use any footage unless you approve first, okay? That's a wrap. Okay, folks, stand by. Uh, bring up Ken and I for me, would you, Phil? Uh, tighten that up a little bit. Yeah, that's nice right there. Hold it. Thanks. Jeff, when can I get some time in here to do some online? Uh, maybe tonight. Uh, I'll let you know. Thanks. Okay. okay, let's do this. And now, Rand Cosmetics once again brings you the whole truth as revealed by the one, the only, Ted May. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thanks very much. And to everyone at home watching our live show today, welcome. Today, the spotlight of Revelations falls on Judge Joshua Cohn. Now, I invited the good judge here today to discuss a certain weekend he's rumored to have spent recently at a law conference in Los Angeles, but he declined. Oh. However, I did manage to track down someone who was at that alleged conference with him. Please welcome his alleged research assistant. This is Miss Carrie McCloskey. Carrie. Oh. Welcome. I love your outfit. Have a seat there, Carrie. Now, Carrie, this research that you did for the judge down in L.A., just exactly what kind of briefs did it entail, anyway? <laughs> he is the first really bona fide hit I've had since I started this network. <laughs> he does get away with murder, doesn't he? Yes, he does. God love him. <laughs> and he hasn't done too badly by you, either. Sponsoring a show is one of the two best decisions I've ever made. <laughs> the second was to become engaged to him. Makes his contract negotiations a lot easier. Carrie, <laughs> <laughs> you've been a great guest today. I want to thank you for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for Carrie McCloskey, Judge Cohen's girl, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Carrie, thank you. Before we close today's show, I have an announcement, a very important announcement. It's here. Everything you wanted to know about me, Ted Maine, but we're afraid to ask, has finally been revealed. Yes, indeed. The truth is out, and not just the truth about me. 
and my many thrilling adventures, but also about some special women I've known and loved before, all in intimate detail. So whether it's the famous star of her own TV series, and I'm referring, of course, to the lovely Roxanne Shields, the star of the hit TV series, Undercover. Another special lady in my life is the widow of a celebrated congressman, Mrs. Nora Turner. Turnabout's fair play, and now the sometimes harsh spotlight of truth falls on me. So whether I tell you all about my romance with a high fashion photographer, or whether it's closer to home and you get to meet a sophisticated and beautiful television producer, I can only warn you that if you pick up this book, you won't put it down. It's all true, it's all in here, and it all goes on sale tomorrow. So you've been a great audience. This is Ted Main saying, watch yourself, because we just may be watching you too. See you tomorrow. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Were you aware he even had a book? Not me. You're his producer. You didn't know about this? No. You must have known. Oh, I read the galley. You read the galleys. You're going to marry him. How can you let him publish a kiss and tell book? But it all happened before we met, so why should I care? Besides, this should push his ratings and my company's sales to an all-time high. Uh, if you two will excuse me, I'm going to go congratulate our star. So tell me, what does he say about me? Plenty. SOB. Yes, but he's our SOB. Oh, Perry Mason. Very big time stuff. Almost as big a deal as this, or haven't you heard about my autobiography yet? The United Nations was all abuzz. <laughs> Came out to bring you a very own copy. Check it out, it's a good read. Is there Oh, well, that's very nice of you, Ted, but I haven't finished reading Mein Kampf. Read it, Charlie, tonight, because tomorrow you're going on special assignment, interviewing all the women I've known and loved. <laughs> Ted, I don't know if you've forgotten, but I don't work for you. You do this time. Says who? Harold Tyson. You remember Harold, the man who signs your paychecks? Ted, I'm doing this piece on Perry Mason. Cool down, Charlie. Mason can wait. This just became the hottest story in show business. I really like your show. Oh, thank you. Have you read Ted Main's book? No, I haven't. Are you going to? Um, I have much better things to do with my time, thanks. Roxanne, how do you feel about Ted Main? What? The next time I see him, I'm gonna ramp this for his rotten little heart! Roxanne, don't you just, just leave me alone, us. okay? When David died in that plane crash, well, it was quite a blow for me and my daughter. Sandra had school, of course, so she recovered fairly quickly. Why are you talking to them? Can't you just leave her alone? Let's cut. I want to have my say. This is important to me. Well, go ahead, Mrs. Turner. Anyway, after David's death, I became a virtual recluse. Then about two years ago, I met Ted. In a way, he brought me back to life. So are you saying you're glad you had your affair with him? In hindsight, no, of course not. But at the time, he was very supportive. 
I was vulnerable. And you might say that he took advantage of me. I had no idea that he'd end up sharing our relationship with the world. That's all I have to say. Excuse me. Make sure you get a shot of that picture of her and Turner over there. Okay. I'll see you back at the station. All right. Hi, Beth, it's me. Um, listen, did you have any luck finding that fashion photographer, Mary Singer? Well, she's got to be somewhere. Where does she know me from? A hotel. Great. Well, did you try this hotel? Uh-huh. Okay, well, I got to go. Keep, keep trying, okay? Okay, bye. Me. I need it. I've spent my life getting permission from people. I don't intend to get it from you. Mom, I'm only trying to help. I'm sorry. I'm mad at Ted May, not you. Maybe I can repay him someday. This is my Miss Passion. Let's use our first, okay? And this is number two. Make sure you get the champagne glasses in this one. And this is a hot ticket. Oh. You are not gonna use that picture. Brenda, sweetheart, it's just a blob of what's already in the book. I don't care. How could you do this to me? Where's your sense of humor? I went out with you, didn't I? <laughs> Ted. Oh, hi, babe. Something's come up. Why the long face? You better see. Next time I see him, I'm going to have this for his rotten little heart. Roxanne, don't. So Nora Turner gave me this hearts and flowers routine, and Mary Singer is nowhere to be found, but I think that Roxanne makes up for them. Mm hmm. I thought you'd better know. This book is going to bring you nothing but trouble, and it serves you right. When are you going to stop being such a spoil sport? Besides, this is great stuff. In fact, I want to use a clip from that for my show today. Ted, she threatened you. You've got to be careful. In fact, I think maybe we should hire a bodyguard. Roxanne's not really capable of doing anything. You never know. I vote for the bodyguard. Everybody gets something straight. I've been in the news business 20 years. I've covered 12 wars, 2,000 stories. I've always watched my own back. I'm not going to start running scared because some hysterical woman threatens me with a Boy Scout knife. I want a clip from that up to the booth because I'm running it on my show today. Okay? Excuse me. stand out you think so how long have i been working for you i know so <laughs> listen to this i've had six people ask me if you're really going to kill ted Maine. two of them volunteered to do it for you you know my agent's always telling me to get involved with something environmental so i figured killing ted would be right up there with saving the ozone layer don't you tell me when you're gonna do it i'll hold his arms what a creep playing that tape on a show like that I guess that's what I get for being involved with him, right? Uh, what time is it? 5.30. I'm going to lie down for a little while. I've got an evening premiere and a 6 a.m. call. Life is hard, Annie. 
Yeah, and all you get in return is fame and fortune. I'll press this before I go. Thanks. Oh, and can you tell him to hold all my calls and wake me up at 8? Got you. Give my regards to your sister. Thanks. You with something? No, I just thought I saw someone I know come in here. Maybe I can help you, man or woman. <laughs> no, that's okay. Do I know you from someplace? Never mind. I, I must have made a mistake. Thank you. Roxanne. Now, how would you know that? You get to be my age, you know just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a pleasant surprise. I knew you weren't mad at me. Come on in, I'll make you crazy. Scott's knee, right? So what's with the scarf? It's not that cold out, is it? chance the lady in the red dress you saw getting off the elevator? I suppose it could have been. No, honey, it must have been Les Roxanne's But she had on a scarf Yeah, but sunglasses. honey, the perfume, remember excuse the me, perfume? Excuse me, What about the perfume? Well, she was wearing this perfume, right, that she sells. It's called Roxanne. Arnie recognized it. Well, is that right, Arnie? I never forget a scent. Take your coat off yet. Why not? You just had a call from your TV friend, Roxanne Shields. Oh, you know, you sent her an invitation to the charity dinner. Of course she accepted. She's just been arrested for murder. She was calling from the police station. I mean, look, I, I admit being mad at Ted. I mean, who wouldn't be? The guy described every sexual encounter we ever had in graphic detail. 
Never been so mad at anyone my whole life. Witnesses say the killer was wearing a red dress and the perfume you endorsed. I was getting ready to go to the premiere. And unfortunately, my assistant Annie was already on her way to Cleveland and can't confirm my whereabouts. Any idea how the killer could have known that you would be wearing a red dress? Hug. Oh, I don't know. I wear a lot of red. Maybe they just got lucky. Maybe. You know, I'm curious. Why did all those women find Maine so, so... Because... Because I... guess he was a very good actor. He, um... He made you believe that you were very special. And that he loved you. Sorry I'm late. Roxanne is my associate, Ken Malatsky. Roxanne Shields. Nice to meet you. I just talked to Brock. They found the murder weapon, a knife. It was identical to the one Miss Shields used in that videotape. They found it in the trunk of your car. Oh, come on! How stupid do they think I am? Can't they tell that this is a frame? Miss Shields, I'm afraid they see it more like an airtight case. Oh, Particularly after what I said on television. God, how could I have been so stupid? You know, a friend of mine once told me that he figured I became an actress because I had a hard time handling reality. Oh, boy, was he right. Please, you, you got to help me with this. I mean, I, I've never been so scared in my life. this case ever comes to trial. Do you have anything you'd like to say to me, Roxanne? You bet I do. I would like to hear. You work too hard. Roxanne, we You heard what Mr. Mason said. Uh, I was talking to her. Excuse me. Hey. I said excuse me. So where to? Ted Main's apartment. We'll drop you off first. Somebody? Uh, yeah, my name's Ken Melansky, and this is... Harry a... Mason. I've, I've got a thing for faces. Jamie Morsey, how you doing? We have permission to examine Mr. Main's apartment. Go right ahead. Oh, no, no. You gotta use the uh, penthouse elevator over there. All right, thanks. Mr. Morrissey, you mentioned in your statement to the police that you saw a woman in a red dress get on the elevator. That's right. The penthouse elevator? Yeah. Did she seem to know where it was? Went straight to it. Did you see anyone else you didn't recognize down here that night? As a matter of fact, there was somebody. A guy, kind of tall, dark. Good looking, but mean looking, too. Uh, I know from someplace. Like I said, I got this thing for faces. Why didn't you mention that in your statement? Police never asked. They just wanted to know about the woman. Thank you, Mr. Morrissey. Well, there's nothing in here that wasn't in the police report. Ken, I, I've seen this place before, and I'm not talking about the photos taken by the police. Take a look in Maine's book, the pictures. This picture of Roxanne, it was taken in here. Right there on the couch. That's right. What 
the sleaze. Yep. The system was put in to record his meetings with mobsters. He probably figured out the other uses for the camera later on. A lot of those pictures were taken in here. And unless Maine brought those women up here blindfolded, all of them would know where that elevator was. The killer could be one of them. I've already asked Ella to do some background research on those ladies. Her birthday's coming up, you know. I know. What are you going to get her? I'm keeping that a secret. You mean you don't know yet? I'm also keeping that a secret. Thanks. Here's the idea. Roxanne Shields has Perry Mason, one of the most successful defense attorneys anywhere, right? The police have their suspect, they've made their case, they're through. But meanwhile, Mason is out looking for anything he can find to help get his client off. All he needs to show is reasonable doubt. Which is a pretty tall order in this case. Yes, but not impossible, especially not for Mason. All right, so just what is it you are proposing? Let me run an investigation parallel to Mason's. I'll be on top of everything he finds. We can keep the prosecution up to speed on what he's got. And that way, we will have a pretty hot story. I am not at all certain about the ethics of this thing. Laura, I'll defer to you. I knew the real Ted Maine, not just the showman. Everybody thought that was all there was to him. I loved him. Um, I don't want Perry Mason to get Roxanne Shields off if she's guilty. But if she didn't do it, I'd sure as hell like to know who did. I think we should do it. <sighs> okay, Michelle, we got the party scene, we got the restaurant scene, we got the living room. I wonder if her orange dress is going to clash with those red and white tablecloths, but... I'm Ms. Kingsley, I'm Roxanne Shields' attorney. My name's Mason. Do you have time for some questions? Of course. You want to give me just about five minutes? So, questions about Ted and me? Basically, yes. Well, why don't you just read his book? I did. I take it your relationship was short-lived. Well, I discovered fairly quickly he liked a lot of ladies. And I didn't like that. You still produce his show. I produce several shows here. My personal feelings don't enter into it. You were angry when you learned that you were in the book? I was upset, yes. You had a very angry public argument with him the day he was murdered. Well, he wanted to use my picture in the show he was doing that day on his book. I objected. Where were you between 8 and 9 o'clock that night? I was right here, going over costumes for a special that I'm producing. Ever wear red, Miss Kingsley? Rarely. But if you wanted to wear red, a dress, for instance, you'd know right where to come, wouldn't you? Yep. Hey, Della. Any messages? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here they are. Thanks. Oh, uh, Perry wants you to look at what I found on Mary Singer. It's in his office. All right. Where's the rest of it? That's it. 
You know, in his book, Ted Maine described her as a high fashion photographer he met at the Regis Hotel. No agency's ever heard of her. Did you check the agencies in New York? Chicago, Los Angeles, everywhere. It's like she didn't exist. Well, Ted Maine sure is kissing somebody in this picture. <laughs> if her real name is Mary Singer, I'll eat my hand. If I had one. the outfit. You trying to get into another book? Don't be cute, Polly. Where have you been? Don't worry about it. If I'm supposed to let you know my every move, then I'd like to know yours. Just leave it alone. What are you up to? What's the gun for? It's none of your business. Because of what you did, sooner or later they're going to come looking. And when they do, I'm going to be ready. What just came? I'd like you to get a knife just like that one. And then what? And then another, and another, and another. And maybe even one more. Uh, I think I can do that. Soon. star Roxanne Shields. Now we go live to Charlie Adams at the courthouse. Roxanne Shields is free today after posting bail of $100,000. Though no one will comment, rumor has it the fact that Ms. Shields was wearing red last night is central to the state's case. The woman seen entering Ted Maine's apartment an hour before he was found murdered was also wearing red. And this is apparently too much of a coincidence. Sandra, I'm Roxanne Shields' attorney. I have an appointment to see your mother. Um, I don't think she's here. I just got back myself. My name is Mason. Mind if I ask you some questions? Um, all right. Come on in. What do you want to ask me about? This, mostly. Where'd you get this? We never distributed these. Well, there's been a lot of speculation that your mother would run for your father's seat. That's been canceled. Ted Maine pretty well took care of any political future my mother had, didn't he? She just started to get her life back together, and then he came along and tore it apart. Was your mother home the night he was murdered? She was at home with me. So? 
You both have an alibi. You have each other. Tell your mother I'll call again. Thank you for your help. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to give out that kind of information. Ah, uh, come on, I'm investigating a murder here. You're not a cop, and you don't have a subpoena. Well, subpoenas take time. I'm after a killer, Hillary, and the longer we stand here talking, the colder the trail gets. Look, I'd like to help you, but... All I want is Mary Singer's address. That's all, I swear. All right, do you have any idea when she registered? Sometime last June, I think. Okay, hold on a sec. Singer. Mary Singer. I really appreciate this, Clarence. Anytime you want to come down and see a taping or whatever, you just let me know, okay? What are you doing here? I remember you. You're the guy who pushes people around for Perry Mason. What, what was your name again? Molansky. Ken Molansky. So why are you asking about Mary Singer? I have a nose for news. <laughs> Seriously, what do you want with her? The same thing you do. You're that reporter Charlie Adams, aren't you? Are you two together? No. no. Uh, I'm afraid we don't have any records of a Mary Singer. Okay. Thanks anyway. So. Well. I guess that's it for here, huh? Guess so, yeah. See you around, Malansky. We'll have somebody up here meet you. Well, thank you. Do you remember seeing this woman? <sighs> Looks familiar. She was here last June? Well, it's a long time and a lot of people ago, my friend. I remember her. Beautiful woman, always acting mysterious. And boy, did she love the shop. Every time she came back, it took at least two of us to get all of her bags up to her room. As a matter of fact, she was here, um... Three times last year? Yeah, I remember her. Was she ever here with anybody? No, she was always alone. You remember anything else? She did a lot of shopping at Riddell's. Try that. All right, thanks a lot. My pleasure. That's right. Mr. Mason, were you looking for me? Yes. Your office has been very reluctant to make an appointment. I really don't have anything to say to you, Mr. Mason. Perhaps you'd answer just one question. What is that? When did you first read the galleys of Ted Main's book? <laughs> Why do you ask? My office spoke to Maine's publisher and got the exact date the galleys came out. Three days later, your company took out a $5 million insurance policy on Maine. What are you getting at? That book really upset you, didn't it? How dare you imply such a thing? I love Ted Maine, and we were going to be married. I think you are beneath contempt, Mr. Mason, so I will thank you to leave me alone. Do you hear me? Ms. Wren. I hear you, Ms. Wren. And so does everyone else. Don't they? So what kept you? Well, look who's here. Look, there's no point in us tripping over each other. Why don't we call it a truce and see if we can help each other out? We're both after the same thing. We are? Yeah, the truth. Um, well, you know, I thought you and Mason were just interested in getting your client off. Well, in this case, our client happens to be innocent. Well, that remains to be seen. 
Are you coming or not? Give me one good reason. Well, you remember when you asked that salesman in there where you delivered something to Mary Singer? I told him to give you the wrong address. I got the right one here. That's one good reason. Miss Shields will be right with you. Thank you. Your relatives in Cleveland, how are they? Fine, thanks. Why? Well, you told Miss Shields you were going to Cleveland to visit them the night of the murder. You didn't make the trip. <sighs> Look, Mr. Mason, I was supposed to work the weekend, but I wanted to spend some time with my boyfriend, so I lied. Do you have to tell Miss Shields? No. But I am interested in where you were the night of the murder. We were at a party. There's a dozen people can swear I was there all night. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Mason. Annie, have you gotten my prescription from the drugstore yet? I'll do it right after I take care of this. Excuse me. May I see your bedroom? My bedroom? Yep, your bedroom. What are you looking for? How the killer could have known what you were wearing. I was hoping there was a building across here so someone could have seen you dressed in red. Have you thought about what you're wearing to court? Good. So, Milansky, what do you want to be when you grow up? I can be half as good as Perry Mason. How about you? I'm good now. I'm just waiting for the world to recognize it. <laughs> Certainly giving him every opportunity. I thought maybe you were going to be the next Ted Mayne. You know, Ted Mayne used to be a damn good journalist. One of the best. Shouldn't that place be around here somewhere? Five nine eight three five nine eight seven nine eight nine. This can't be it. Mary Singer. No, I'm afraid I've never heard of her. But Reverend, she had a freezer delivered to this address that was just last November. A freezer? What? This is a church, not a restaurant. Well, you have a kitchen. Maybe she donated it? I don't know anything about any freezer or about this Mary Singer. I wish she had given us a freezer. We could use it. <laughs> Sorry. The people at the store must have given me the wrong address. Let's try the parcel service office. Thank you, Reverend. Yeah, thanks. This is Reverend Leary. Someone was just here asking about Mary Singer. There it is. Uh, there's no place to park. Look, you stay here. I will be right back. All right. Mary Singer? Mm -hmm. I found her credit card. I'm trying to return it to her. Why don't you just turn it over to the police? Because the police won't give me a reward. Okay. Mary and Paul Singer, 7920 Valley Way. Thank you very much. You bet. Identification, please. Well, you mind telling me what this is all about? This car's been reported stolen. What? What are you talking about? Just keep your hands where I can see them. Well, my wallet's in my right hand pocket. Do you mind if I get it? Okay. Charlie, run! 
They caught me. Go ahead, run. Get out of here. Hey, get her. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Give me your other hand. Don't come in. What do you mean, don't come in? Ken just called. Good. Where is he? In jail. Jail? Mm-hmm. Little place about 40 miles from here called Georgetown. The police chief is waiting for your call. I'd like to speak to the chief of police, please. The name's Mason. Yes, I'll hold. Do you happen to know the best escort service in town? Not right offhand. Would you find out for me? Mm -hmm. You can use my phone. Oh. Yes. There you go, Bill. Thanks a lot, Miss Adams. My my wife will be thrilled. And again, I I'm sorry about the mix-up. Oh, that's okay. These things happen. I called a cab for you. It's waiting outside. How sweet of you. Thank you. Where's Mr. Melansky? Uh, he's, um, he's still in the tank. The chief's on the phone checking out his story. Well, I guess I better be going. Thanks for everything. It was nice to meet you all. Oh, thanks. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. second person who's come in here today asking about her yeah i know in fact that first woman you know the pushy one uh -huh. she's my girlfriend oh, why didn't you just ask her for the address she lost it can you believe it she is such a flake anyway she was too embarrassed to come back here so she sent me story of my life okay charlene adams charlie adams Paul, she's that reporter. You're going to scream? What are you doing here? Don't move. Nobody's there. Charlie? I'm okay, Molanski. Next time, think before you get yourself into a situation you're not prepared to handle. Hold it right there. Drop it. 
Now. Knife, too. You okay, Paulie? Yeah, I'm okay. Paulie. Paul Danton, the mobster. Shut up! What are you waiting for? Get rid of him. Let me see. State your name, please. Susan Reardon. And what is your occupation? I'm a medical examiner employed by the county. In your professional capacity, did you perform a post-mortem examination of Ted Maine? Yes, I did. Have you established the time of death? Approximately between 8.15 and 8.30 on the evening of the 19th. Will you please tell the court the cause of death? Ted Maine was killed with a knife wound in the chest, which punctured his aorta. Have you had the opportunity to examine this knife marked State Exhibit B? Yes, I have. Did you find blood traces on this knife? Yes. Were you able to determine if the blood on this knife matches Ted Maine's? Yes, it does. No further questions. At about 7.30 the morning after the murder, we responded to a call from the supervisor of uh, Ted Maine's building. And who discovered Mr. Maine's body? Uh, the maid had come in to clean, and she saw the body uh, lying on the carpet. Did you interview the defendant that morning? Well, yes, I did. What prompted you to do that? Well, well she had publicly uh, threatened him with bodily harm. Could the defendant account for her whereabouts at the time of the murder? Well, she stated that she was in her apartment alone. I call your attention to State's Exhibit B. Do you recognize it? Yes, it has my mark on it. Mm -hmm. When did you first see this knife, Lieutenant? Uh, that morning. It was in the trunk of Miss Shields' car. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. No further questions. She came out of the elevator and she went straight toward Mr. Maine's apartment. Did you get a good look at her? Yes, I did. At least I got a good look at what I could see of her. What do you mean, Mr. Wyman? Well, she was all bundled up, kind of like the way she is now. That's the woman you saw that night? The defendant? Yes, yes it is. Aside from the way she was dressed, did you notice anything else about her? Well, yes, uh, she was wearing Roxanne. You know, the perfume. Are you an expert on perfumes, Mr. Wyman? Well, somewhat. Uh, I like women, you see, and at my age, in order to enjoy their company, I often have to throw what you might call perks into the relationship. Perks? Yeah, you know, flowers, champagne, perfumes, that sort of thing. And as a result, I know my flowers, I know my champagnes, and I know my perfumes. So you're sure that the woman you saw that night was wearing Roxanne? Absolutely. No more questions. Mr. Mason. Defense has no questions, Your Honor. Next witness. Uh, the state calls Mr. James Morrissey. You're excused. About how far away from her were you when you saw her? About 30 feet. Saw her clear as a bell. And you see that woman in this courtroom today? Yes, sir. She's right there. Let the record show that the witness pointed to the defendant. How is your eyesight, Mr. Morrissey? 2020. You don't wear contacts or glasses? No, sir. And you are absolutely certain it was the defendant you saw that night? Yes, sir. Your witness. What time did you see this woman, Mr. Morrissey? About 8 o'clock. And how was the woman you saw dressed? Just like she is now. What color were her eyes? Well, I don't know. She was wearing dark glasses, like she's got on now. What color was her hair? Red. But if she was wearing a scarf, how could you tell? Are you just assuming her hair was red because Roxanne Shields' hair is red? Look, all I know is that's the woman I saw that night. And you are sure? Positive. Are you sure it wasn't that woman? Or what about that woman? Or could it have been this woman? 
Well? No. It was her. I'm positive. Would you mind? Let the record show that this witness, like Mr. Wyman before him, has identified not Roxanne Shields, but Jenny Tessier, an employee of a local escort service. <laughs> Roxanne Shields is the woman now standing in the rear of the courtroom. No further questions. Della. Any word from Ken? Uh, not yet. I'm worried. So am I. Mr. Mason? Yes? We'd like to talk. See you back in the office. Everything's fine. Ken Milansky? Yes, he is. He worked with you? Yes, he does. Why are you holding him? Because he and the young lady have stumbled onto two people we have in the witness protection program. We found Mary Singer and her brother. His real name's Paul Danton. She's his sister, Marie. They're both due in court this summer to give key testimony on some top organized crime people. As you can imagine, your finding them causes us some problems. I'm sorry for any inconvenience. But I need both witnesses in court tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Now, wait a minute. That would require us to relocate them with new identities. My client is on trial for murder. Their testimony will be important. I'd like them in court at 9 o'clock. You've got a lot of nerve, Mr. Mason. I wouldn't think you'd want it publicized on television how these two young people found your protected witnesses. I'll have them there. Now, where's the young lady? Mary, arranged for your release. Great. Thought we were supposed to be in this together. I didn't think I could trust you. Well, right now, the only thing I know for sure is that I can't trust you. Is there more to this lecture? No. Uh, Your Honor, uh, page 94. Page 94, Mr. Prosecutor. Uh, Ms. Danton, you have in your hand a copy of Ted Main's book, opened to page 94. Would you identify the woman in the picture, please? It's me. I told Ted my name was Mary Singer and that I was a fashion photographer because I obviously couldn't tell him my real name. When was that picture taken? Last year in June. When you saw your picture in Ted Main's book, what was your reaction? I was scared. I was afraid my brother's enemies would recognize me and eventually trace us to our new home. Were you angry? Yes, mostly at myself. Where were you the evening of March 19th? Objection. Relevancy. Ms. Stanton is not on trial here. Your Honor, the state contends that my client is guilty in large part because she had a motive for killing Ted Main and an alibi that cannot be substantiated. I intend to show that she is not the only person who meets those criteria. Overruled. Witness is instructed to answer the question. I was home in Georgetown that night. With your brother? No. You were alone. My brother came back at 8 o'clock. 
How can you be so sure of the time? I was watching TV and I switched to a program I wanted to see. No further questions? No questions. Defense calls Mr. Paul Danton. How did you feel when you saw that picture, Mr. Danton? I was mad as hell. At whom? My sister. And that creep Maine for telling the world stuff any normal man would have kept himself. Where were you the evening of the 19th? Objection. Mr. Mason calls everybody who had a reason to dislike Ted Maine to the stand. We could be here for months. Your Honor. Yes, I know. Objection overruled. Witness will answer the question, please. I was out driving around. You ended up in the lobby of Ted Maine's apartment building, did you not? The concierge of that building is sitting right back over there. Now, you remember him? You do remember him. Yeah, I was there that night. And what did you do while you were there? Nothing. I never got the chance. He saw me, so I left. What did you intend to do? I'll take care of business. Kill him? Objection. He's badgering the witness. Overruled. Mr. Mason? Did you want to kill him? He wasn't worth it. You didn't slip in later when Mr. Morrissey's back was turned? No, I went home. On your way home, you stopped at a convenience store in Idaho Springs, a town over 20 miles from your house, did you not? Yeah, to pick up cigarettes, odds and ends. Well, then I stopped for a beer. So what? Are you aware that later on that evening there was a holdup in that store? I read about it in the paper. Now, the police have supplied us with a copy of the surveillance tape of the night of the robbery. It shows that you were there at 8.30. If necessary, I can introduce it into evidence. What's your point? The tape proves you couldn't have been home by 8 o'clock, as your sister testified. It's over half an hour from town to Idaho Springs. That proves I couldn't have killed Maine. The tape gives me an alibi. Exactly my point. You have an alibi. But your sister does not. No further questions. No questions. Defense calls Brenda Kingsley. Who broke off your affair, you or Ted Main? I did. It was at about that time that you applied for a job with another television company. That's right. Isn't it true that you didn't get that job because Ted Main made a phone call to one of the company's executives? That was a rumor. I didn't pay much attention to it. What if I produce several co-workers who will testify that you were furious at the time? That you threatened Maine? <laughs> well, that was a long, long time ago. Where were you between 8 and 9 o'clock the evening of the 19th, Miss Kingsley? I was in a costume warehouse. With whom? I was alone. No more questions. No questions. Defense calls Nora Turner to the stand. I understand that before this book was published, you planned to run for your late husband's seat in Congress. That's right. You still plan to run? Not now. Where were you the night Ted Maine was murdered? I was home with my daughter. The two of you were at home that night? Yes. Who's Gary Hazelton? He's my boyfriend. We're going steady. Isn't it true that on the night Ted Maine was murdered, you were with Gary? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Mr. Mason. Isn't it true that on the night Ted Maine was murdered, you were with Gary? I was at home with my mother. Mr. Hazelton, would you please stand? Sandra, unless you tell me the truth, I'll have to put your friend on the stand. If he lies for you under oath, he'll go to jail. Is that what you want? No. I wasn't home that night. I was out with Gary. Thank you, Mr. Hazelton. The day I came to your house, something was burning in the fireplace, a red dress. 
You were trying to destroy it, were you not? Yes. Was that because you suspected your mother was the one who killed Ted Main? Speak up, Sandra. Yes. I have no more questions. No questions, Your Honor. Witness is excused. And I think we'll break here for lunch. Court is in recess until 2.30. As long as you don't touch anything. Well, it looks like Nora Turner did it, huh? She certainly could have. What are you doing here? There are still a couple of missing pieces. So what are your chances of proving Roxanne Shields innocent? Charlie. Do something for me, will you? Go over there and open that chest. I I'm sorry, what chest? That chest. And bring me the camera you put in it. Ted Main would be proud. I'm an investigative reporter. That's so? I just want the real story, Mr. Mason. At what cost to yourself? What, what is that supposed to mean? You're not above using rumor or innuendo, are you? I do what I have to do to get the truth. Charlie, what you have to do is to make sure it's possible to tell the difference between you and Ted Maine. And you can't? If I were running your network, I'd give you Ted Maine's show. You'd be a perfect replacement. Can I quote you on that? Definitely. What was that all about? Just exchanging points of view. She could use a new one. She's a good reporter, Ken. She's a bright and talented young woman. I like her. You could have fooled me. And that's not so easy. Those are the police photos? Yeah. Okay. Ted Main comes home. He takes a shower. He pours himself a drink. And that's when the killer comes. Now, since there's no sign of forced entry, he probably let the killer in himself. And since a glass of brandy with his fingerprints all over it was sitting out on the bar, the glass of scotch that was found on the floor must have been meant for his killer. So he pours him or her a drink, turns around and gets stabbed in the chest. He drops the glass, falls to the floor, and dies. How whatever was sitting there, how did it get broken? It's a bull. Maybe he staggered into it and knocked it over. No, he would have left a trail of blood both ways. Why should that have been broken? Doesn't make sense. How did the killer know Roxanne would be wearing a red dress that night? That doesn't make sense either. Maybe her assistant told someone. No, no reason to. Look, you take the red dress, I'll take the bull. Surprise. Look, Mason just raked me over the coals. I really, I don't need it from you two. Well, I got news for you. Mason actually likes you. <laughs> got a pretty funny way of showing it. 
part of his charm, I guess. Now I gotta go. Wait. I've been thinking. Um, I want to help. I bet. Now just listen a second, okay? I, I realize that I've been fairly obnoxious. And, um, I feel really bad about what happened the other day. Is that enough of an apology for you? Ken, please don't make this any tougher for me than it already is. Get in. stop you. Are we going somewhere specifically or are we just out for a drive? Okay, here's the plan. The killer had to know that Roxanne was going to wear a red dress the night of the murder. Oh, yeah, so I heard about Mason's little trick in the courtroom, all those mysterious ladies in red. Very smart. Wish we had been there. Sorry. As I was saying, I was on my way to Roxanne's suite at the Hotel St. Clair. So you're going to figure out how the killer knew about that dress? I want to try. Ken? Yes? I think you're going about this entirely the wrong way. What are you talking about? The Hotel Sinclair? It's back that way. You should have turned left about six blocks ago. I knew that. Just seeing if you're paying attention. Thank you, Miss Street, for agreeing to testify. Proceed, Mr. Mason. Miss Street, this is the murder weapon. Now, I recently asked you to buy a knife identical to the one in this photo, did I not? It's similar to the murder weapon. Yes, you did. And were you able to do that? Yes, I was. With what degree of success? Bailiff. I found a dozen similar knives. Your Honor... At this time, I'd like to request that those knives be entered into evidence as defense exhibits 15, 16, 17, 18, through 26. I object! Your Honor, anyone could have gone out and bought a knife just like the ones on that table and the one in that photograph and used it to kill Ted Main and then planted it in Roxanne's car. Objection! Now Mr. Mason is testifying. Thank you, Miss Street, that's all. No questions. Are you trying to say that I helped somebody frame Roxanne? No. No. Not at all. Maybe you told somebody about the dress inadvertently? The only person I talked to about that dress was Roxanne. Was the dress in this room the whole time? Yes. You didn't need to press it or anything? Of course. But it only took a couple of minutes. Can you show us where you pressed it? This is where I did it. Um, I have much better things to do with my time, thanks. Roxanne, how do you feel about Ted Maine? What? The next time I see him, I'm gonna lay up this for his rotten little heart! Did you mean it when you said that, Ms. Shields? Of course not. Then why did you say it? Because I was hurt. And I was humiliated, and I was mad, but... I never would have really killed him. We've heard Mr. Wyman swear under oath that the woman who went up to Ted Main's apartment the night he was murdered was wearing Roxanne perfume. Now, it's called Roxanne because you endorse it. Is that correct? Yes. Is this the perfume you endorse? It's the Roxanne bottle. Yes, this is Roxanne. Would you put some on your left wrist, please? One would assume that because you endorse Roxanne perfume, you also wear it. One would assume that, yes. In point of fact, 
You do not wear it, do you? No. You do not wear any perfume, do you? No. Isn't it true that you are so allergic to the ingredients commonly found in perfume that you take antihistamines just to be in the same room with women who do wear perfume? Yes, that is very true. If you try wearing even a little perfume, what happens? This happens. Is this what you were looking for? Depends on the view. You've seen four rooms already. The view is basically the same. Well, some are better than others. Malatsky? Like you're right. Good news. At Roxanne's hotel, there's a room in an adjacent wing that looks directly into Andy Bowen's office. And that's how the killer knew what Roxanne was wearing the night of the murder. See, she rented the room and she watched Annie press the dress. Actually, we figured that much out thanks to Charlie. Who rented the room? Well, we know that it was a woman. She stayed one night and she paid cash. She registered under the name of Jane Johnson. They only remember that she wore a scarf and sunglasses. But when we talked to the maid who cleaned the room after she checked out, she said she remembered one thing vividly. Whoever stayed in that room was a smoker. The maid said the wastebasket was full of cigarette butts. She remembered it vividly because that room's on a non-smoking floor. Dellum, find out the date of Ted Maine's birthday. Mm -hmm. Ken, talk to the maid. Find out what brand that woman smoked. Right away. Perry, tomorrow's Della's birthday, you know. Shh. I'm trying to keep it a secret. What'd you get her? Remember, I'm also keeping that a secret. I could have gone to my network with all of this, you know. Yes, I know. You're not surprised that I didn't? No. I am pleased. Very. You and Ted Maine were engaged to be married. Is that right, Ms. Rand? Yes, it is. How long had you known him? Mm. We met about a year ago when Rand Cosmetics became the sole sponsor of the show. You became engaged when? Within a month. We fell in love almost instantly. And after he published this book in which he described his affairs with various women in extensive detail, how did you feel about him then? I still loved him. All those affairs happened long before he met me. You didn't feel angry or resentful? Of course not. It was ancient history. Isn't it also ancient history that you suffer from a psychotic kind of jealousy? Objection. Relevancy. Sustained. Your birthday's when, Ms. Rand? August 7th. Ted Maine's birthday? April 24th. So, according to astrology, he was a... Um, a... a Taurus. Taurus. Taurus the bull. You believe in astrology, don't you, Ms. Rand? It's harmless fun. Last year for his birthday, didn't you give Ted a present? A ceramic bull identical to this one? Yes, I gave Ted a statue like that, yes. Where were you the night your fiancé was murdered, Ms. Rand? I was home, alone. Your Honor, I have no more questions of this witness, but I reserve the right to recall her at a later time. Mr. Kelly, what time did you go on duty as night manager at the Hotel Sinclair on March 19th? 3 p.m. sharp. I'm never late. Never. Is it true that room 1502 in the east wing of the Hotel Sinclair has a view towards the south wing where your luxury suites are located? Yes, sir, that is correct. Do you recall who checked into that room on March 19th? Yes, sir. She called herself Jane Johnson. You say called herself? 
You had reason to doubt her name? Well, she insisted on paying cash. She refused to show any identification or credit cards. She wore dark sunglasses and a high scarf. Well, you know, like a celebrity or something. Can you describe her in any other way? Yes. She was about five foot six inches tall, dark hair, excellent figure, marvelous perfume. Would you say she was about the same size as Laura Rand? That's the woman sitting just in back of the prosecutor. Yes. But you can't positively identify her. No, sir. No. Mr. Hartman, you have in your hand Defense Exhibit 15, a knife like the one used to kill Ted Maine. Is it true that you sell those at your hunting shop? Yes, sir, definitely. Do you recall selling a knife like that to a woman on the 19th of March? Yes, uh, definitely the afternoon of the 19th I did. What makes you so sure? Well, Mr. Mason, I sell a lot of handguns to women, but a knife like this, I hardly ever sell one of these to a woman. So I remember it clearly. Can you describe the woman? <laughs> She's built uh, real nice. Uh, she had a, a sexy perfume, you know, the kind that drive most guys a little crazy. Um, but like I told you before, she had dark shades and a scarf on, so I really didn't see her face too clearly. Your Honor, I recall Laura Rand. Ms. Rand, you were a guest at the Hotel Sinclair the night of the murder? No. Have you ever visited the Hotel Sinclair? No, never. Have you ever visited Mr. Hartman's hunting supply store? No, never. Your Honor, I fail to see the point of any of this line of questioning. This is all baseless, and Mr. Mason is wasting the court's time. Your Honor, once again, I reserve the right to recall Ms. Rand and now call Police Lieutenant Brock. Lieutenant Brock, you are and have been stipulated to be a recognized expert in criminalistics, are you not? That is correct. Did you recently have the opportunity to examine the desk register and room 1502 at the Hotel Sinclair? Yes, at your request, I examined both of those areas for fingerprints. Did you also check and examine the front counter area of Hartman's hunting supply store for fingerprints? Yes, I did, Mr. Mason. Were you able to locate and identify any legible prints? As you can imagine, there were quite a few full and partial prints which were discovered. Of these, we took only the clear, full prints and matched them with our known exemplars. Were you able to identify those prints, Lieutenant? The matched prints belong to Laura Rand. Now I ask you, on the night of March 19th, did you not go to your fiancé's penthouse and murder him, knowing Roxanne Shields would be blamed? No. I loved Ted. Why would I kill him? Mr. Melansky, according to the sworn testimony Marie Danton gave in this courtroom, she had an affair with Ted Maine, not in June of 1990, as he contended in his book, but in June of 1991, while he was engaged to you. He lied to you, didn't he? You became jealous, insanely jealous. How many other women had he lied about? How many? A statue identical to the one you'd given Ted Maine was found 10 feet from his body, broken into hundreds of pieces. Now, how did that happen, Ms. Rand? I don't know. I wasn't there. We show you a blow-up from page 94 of Maine's book. It's a picture of Ted and Marie Danton. Now, if you look closely, you can see the statue you gave him in the background. It's not in any other picture, just that one. You certainly realized the significance of that, did you not? Ted Maine had had an affair after he met you, maybe several. That made you insanely jealous, did it not? Roxanne Shields' statement on television gave you the perfect person to frame. You were insanely jealous of her too, were you not? So. 
He went to his penthouse that night, disguised as Roxanne Shields. You stabbed him to death. And you smashed the statue. The present you'd given him. You smashed it to bits. <laughs> Ironic. Isn't it, Ms. Rand? The loving present you'd given him is one of the things that trapped you. Mr. Mason. Do you want to know what is really ironic? Ted's ego. If he hadn't included Marie Datton in that book, <laughs> I never would have known. Oh, but he just had to include her pictures in all. <laughs> he just couldn't resist flaunting one last conquest. <laughs> Think men get what they deserve. Don't you? Move to dismiss, Your Honor. Defense certainly concurs. Motion is granted. Bailiff is instructed to take this witness into custody. This court is adjourned. I think so. Harry? So, I... what about that charity dinner? You just named the day, and I am there. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Della. Oh, oh. good luck, dear. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Where, where, where are you going? That is one murderer I happen to be on a first name basis with any luck, and I'm going to get an exclusive. Well, I thought maybe we could have lunch. Are you kidding? Dinner. Meet me at the station at 6 30. I'm not waiting till 6 30. What's this? Present. For whom? For you. Thank you. Put it away. <laughs> oh. Oh, they're, they're gorgeous. Next fall, we'll take a trip to where those grew up. How did you know? Who's the greatest detective in the world? Sherlock Holmes. Happy birthday.